Uh, this is the Bible Touchstone, Responding to Tired of Hypo 9. And it's a video series entitled Lucifer, also known as Satan, or Exposing Lucifer, or something like that, a three part series. And so I just want to take the liberty to address some of the some issues in there, some of the proclivities that I saw in the video. Just give some commentary. I want to do it in a fair way. And even though you and I, we don't agree on very much theologically, I can't think of anything besides, I mean, I suppose you believe the Bible is the word of God and, and stuff like that. We might have different definition of terms like that. I'd say we both believe in the gospel, even though I would say that you believe in a different gospel than me. For example, I believe that Jesus Christ came to save people. He came to save sinners, and he actually accomplished that. But uh, I think you would suggest that Jesus put us all in a salvable state. He didn't really save anybody. It uh, takes us to meet him halfway or something like that. Or, you know, we dis I know that you disputed justification by faith alone. Uh, we had a little bit of a discussion on those kind of things. Well, I mean, even though we don't agree on what I would hold as the major principles of Christianity, uh, I wouldn't regard you as an unbeliever. I think that you're probably well on your way to coming to a knowledge of the truth. So that that's only I don't want to make these kind of confrontations vain or anything. I'm not trying to persuade you or anything. I just think you know it's nice to discuss these things, and I think you should you should face some of these issues too. So on the this first your first video, it was good. It was a it seemed like a survey of some of the more well-known passages that deal with the devil or Satan or something like that. And one of the things I want to address first is that when you appeal to Isaiah chapter 14, you suggest that Lucifer is Satan. In fact, that's the title of the video series. Lucifer, also known as Satan, which if you read the general context and the immediate context, it explicitly says that it's an oracle to the king of Babylon and you don't have to study too deeply to find out that Lucifer is actually a title for the king of Babylon and even the title son of the morning it's a title for, of majesty even that title son of the morning is a, applied to Jesus in the New Testament to Jesus Christ so it's not necessarily that Lucifer is somebody's name or the name of the devil or anything like that. Even Satan isn't a name. It's a, it's a, the adversary. It's the accuser. It's the one that persecutes uh, against Israel, the people of God, and so forth. Um, I know you did note that Satan was called a son. And I think that's what you were alluding to. Uh, Satan is the son of the morning. But you implied that that meant son of God, which that I, I dispute that. I don't think that that's founded. You also suggest that all of humanity, because God loves all the humanity, that he therefore, everybody is a son of God. But I think the New Testament is quite clear who are the sons of God and how are they manifested. It's not from the fruit of anything other than Jesus Christ. So, I just wanted to address a few more issues, too, that I saw were these sort of proclivities when you take your position. For one, when we start getting away from the absolute sovereignty of God, what we have to do, theologically, because there's all these other problems that start to pop up when we deny superlapsarianism and stuff like that, what we, have, we have to face all these problems of evil and where did evil come from and stuff like that and so what the it's interesting the route that you've taken is actually you seem to deny our, our own responsibility even though you still hold us accountable and culpable being deceived you suggest a few things you say that it is not really people but Satan who is responsible and who influences us and you also say that Satan is behind every last drop of evil. Now, I wouldn't dispute that, you know, but I, the way you said it, it's as if that 
it's not us that is actually responsible for our sins. The what makes us culpable is his fault. It's his fault that you know I'm a sinner or something like that. No, it, it's that creatures rebel against God, and yes, they may be deceived. I'm not disputing that we're deceived by Satan before the illumination of the Holy Ghost comes, before the gospel enlightens us to His holy calling, before you know, before we apprehend the truth. I'm not saying that we weren't under the influence of Satan. We were in darkness, surely. But then you also, in your last video, make an argument for free will. But you, you can't have both. You can't have Satan influenced our minds and has influence over us, and then also say we have free will. That's not. That's a contradiction in terms right there. So I think you should probably take a look at what you mean by that. You say things like, we are pawns of Satan, and then you also suggest that, by implication, that God is a pawn of Satan. Because, let's look at your argument. Now, I'm going to abstract it a little bit, but I'm not taking it out of the context of your argument. And I think I'm staying true to your, the intent, what your intended argument was. You say things like, Satan is holding God hostage. And what you meant was, you defined later, you said that, God's love, that is, as you find it, is God's love for all of humanity, is holding him hostage from demolishing Satan right away. And by implication, you mean that God also loves Satan, or, you know, he's given him, or given us a chance, or, as you said, and, you know, it's hard to make sense of your argument at this point, because your reason for why God did not take the tree out of the garden of good and evil is basically because Satan tempts us, but God tests us to see what we will do. And it's like you're saying God doesn't know what's going to happen in the future, that he's leaving it all up to chance, or leaving it up to our power, and the way God operates is subject to way, the way mankind, what mankind decides, and the power and volition that they have to hate and stuff like that. And what you've said, when you say that God is held hostage to Satan, what you, and with the way you've defined this, this complex mythological plan of Satan, is that it's like Satan has this plan, and then God just has to respond to whatever Satan does, because Satan deceives the human race now, because it does so independently from God's power. Because It's like you're constructing and projecting this demigod or this other god besides God, but now God has to send his son as like plan B to fix everything up that Satan's done because, you know, God gave him the power to, you know, do all these do all this evil and stuff. But I mean, yeah, all these problems that you seem to be accusing Calvinism of, you do not evade them theologically. In fact, I, when you look at the proclivities of your system of thought, you see you're tracing a lot of the same things you're accusing Calvinists of, and then you're committing some grievous errors, and that are, you know, theological problems that are I couldn't even fathom. Uh, saying that Satan is behind all the evil to the very last drop.